Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Triple A Hole Podcast. I, of course, am your Triple A Hole Death Witch, uh, and we're 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 gonna do something a little different this week. It's probably gonna be a bit of a shorter episode. Uh, not a whole lot going on in the in the gaming world. I hadn't already talked about other than digital game sales, and I don't mean sales as in hey, you're buying something digitally, but I mean digital storefronts uh, having a sale and how that differs from. Uh, your typical retail sale, such as a Black Friday sale at a GameStop or somewhere like that, and how they just keep fucking them up. Where you should, where you shouldn't buy, and my personal experiences uh, with sales. So we'll start with the big name players here uh, this week, and we're going to start with Steam, who I just, I can't figure out what they're doing. Uh, You know, they're in... They're 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 in the biggest quote unquote console battle of this generation. You had your Nintendo versus Sega, you know. You had your you had your PlayStation versus Nintendo back in the day. You had your PlayStation versus Xbox after that. So you had those are typical consoles, but now that everything's gone digital on PC, it's battle of the storefronts. And even though Epic is an inferior storefront with just multiple problems and a roadmap for some reason should be an easy win for Steam. They already have the user base. They've got the reputation. They've got the platform that people actually want to buy the games on because they're, they're, you know, their library's already there. They're known for having good sales. So why have they done absolutely fuck all to fight back against Epic? The only thing Epic has right now are exclusives. It's no secret that the only reason they're even competing in this game is because of exclusives. And they feel that they have to. And you know what? Epic is... I'm surprised like Steam hasn't done anything to even address them. Considering that the Epic storefront has specifically called them out on more than one occasion. And even offered to back down and stop doing exclusives. And basically cease fire on their attack on Steam storefront. Because they claim they're doing it for the better of all gaming. For the better of the industry by saying, you know what, if Steam matches our our uh, you know revenue split with developers, we'll leave them alone. You know, Steam takes thirty percent um, from its from from any dev that publishes on their on their storefront, which is it's a pretty big number. You know, that's that's over a quarter of the game. That's a that's a that's a that's a third of the, that's a third of your game sale going to the storefront which is unheard of i mean it's huge epic only charges a mere 12 percent. so they said if steam matches that then they'll stop doing exclusives you know they've called steam out and steam has stayed absolutely quiet with the only update to the steam store recently being uh you know, you know the only real update from steam itself recently being updates to its vr platform and them putting out their own product which is apparently where all of their uh, where all of their dev time and energy is gone, not into fighting Epic, but releasing their own VR headset to compete with Valve, uh, to compete um, with HTC and Facebook's Oculus Rift. They have released their own headset at the competitively priced, uh, you know, full kit with the controllers and base stations. Basically, the same thing you'd get with a with a Vive or a Rift, and you can get theirs superior next gen. Uh, VR headset at the competitively priced model of $1,000. Which is ridiculous. That is, that is double the price, more than double the price of either of its com- uh, of its competitors, of the Oculus Rift or the, or the Vive. And is probably about as much as most people spent on their PC to game with that headset on anyway. So Steam just seems to be just completely tone deaf and blind to what people want anymore. And you can tell this from their most recent sale. Uh, So indie devs are are mad and worried that Steam sales have affected their games in a very negative way. Not in a, oh, you drove traffic to our game uh, because you drove traffic to our game because... You know, people tried it when they otherwise wouldn't have, and you put us up on the feature list. No, because their latest sale and the sale before it 
uh, focus pretty heavily on your wish list. With this, uh, with with one of the sales um, was split up into teams, and the winning team got one free game from their wish list. Um, the problem with this, uh, because there's always a gimmick to a Steam sale, some mini game or some shit. So the mini game last time, when you picked a team, you uh, you did quest, which were like play old games in your library, etc. Um, and then everyone on your team would contribute points to to that quest, and the winning team at the end of the sale uh, would get a free game from their wish list. The problem with this was, uh, if you participated in the sale, then you know anybody could join any team. Your teams weren't randomly assigned. So, of course, everyone chose the same team, guaranteeing that ev- everyone who would win. So the top, so many people on the winning team that contributed points got a free game from their wish list. Now, this caused every user uh, who participated in the sale to go through and delete everything on their wish list and then start fine-tuning their wish list to only contain one or two games. So that they could guarantee they got the free game they wanted from their wish list before the end of the sale. Because Steam poorly worded how this would work. So they made it sound as if you'd get a random game from your wish list. When they later clarified that it's not a random game from, from your wish list, it's the top game on your wish list you get for free. You know, if you're, you know, the winner. The problem with people altering their wish list is a lot of indie devs rely on people using the wishlist feature on Steam to get sales. Because a lot of people will wishlist things they're interested in on Steam, myself included, when it comes to uh, indie games. Because indie games are always kind of a risk. they got no reputation. You're, you're just going off of screenshots and maybe a video and user feedback. And a lot of people don't take the risk of buying an indie game until they know it's what the game is and if it's worth it. Uh, so people like me will put it on, but we're more likely to take that risk if the game goes on a pretty good sale. So we'll put that game on our wish list and we'll watch it for a while. And that's what I do. I throw a lot of games on my wish list. I watch them for a while to see how many of my friends buy it, see how popular it becomes, kind of keep an eye on its on its rating, and to see when it goes on sale. Because if you got Steam's mobile app, it'll alert you when games on your wish list are on sale. And you can just quickly pull up your wish list scroll through it and it puts all the stuff that's on sale at the top and you can you know if you're someone like me you only buy stuff on sale on steam and usually only from your wish list well the problem with people you know basically clearing out their wish list now because of the sale and you know only putting the stuff they absolutely want like your newest AAA games or whatever big expensive game they were trying to win is a lot of those indie games now go forgotten about and indie devs are saying it was affecting their sales. Now I'm not here to just pick on Steam storefront. I'm just confused as to what as to who's making their decisions here lately. Because they've chosen to ignore Epic Storefront entirely. And they just seem to just just misfire with these confusing ass, unnecessary mini games on their sales that just keep getting more convoluted, more confusing. You know, back in the day it used to be something simple. You know, a little interactive store uh, mini game where you just collected trading cards that you got as part of the sale. You know, stuff that promoted sales. You know, like if you bought X number of dollars worth of stuff during the sale, you got a trading card. You got a Steam trading card. And you could collect those trading cards to unlock a badge or, you know, what, what, whatever. Just fun little gimmicks that didn't mean anything. But now they're affecting actual game sales. They're just dropping the ball with these decisions left and right. But I'm not just picking on Steam. Epic's had its share of problems. Like, why is it so hard to get a digital storefront right? Because this is this is everyone's chance to go full digital, to get away from um, the retail space. Because the retail space has been fucking up for years and has it's had a bad reputation. I don't know many people who like going into a GameStop. And GameStop had that stranglehold on the industry for so long because it's where you had to go to buy your games. And then games went digital, and then you didn't have to go there anymore. You know? 
So this was their chance to get all that shit right. And these storefronts are just launching with these lackluster features or just absolutely dropping the ball. I mean, Epic doesn't even have a fucking shopping cart on its storefront. And you know what? I can't just pick on Epic for that. Because the eShop doesn't have one either. On Nintendo. I pull out my Switch and I have to buy games one at a time. And I like an all digital collection of games. Especially on a system like the Switch. Where it's portable. Because I don't want to have to carry around a bunch of fucking game cards with me. To keep track of. That to possibly lose or get stolen because I'm out and about. I want it all on the system. So I can just put it in one pocket and be and, and be done with it. You know, throw it in my jacket pocket and go on about my day and not have to worry about carrying around all these fucking game cards. So digital sales make even more sense on a system like the Switch. But you go into the eShop and the wish list is almost hidden completely from you. Because I was wish listing items left and right when I first got my Switch and first going to the Switch's version of the eShop. And it took me a while to figure out where my fucking wish list was when I wanted to check on it. It doesn't give you an alert at all that, that a game on your wish list is on sale. Even though the Switch has a built-in alert system that it seems to love to do to tell you about new releases and shit for games you don't care about, such as videos of people playing it. You know, it'll shove corporate Let's Plays at you on a daily basis, but it, but it won't tell me when something on my... Something that might actually get them a sale. It won't tell me when a game on my wish list that I'm interested in is on sale. Because that's what I do on Switch. I throw it on my wish list. I wait for it to go on sale because I want to buy it at full price. And then I pick up those games. Most of my indie games, that's how I buy them on Switch. I throw them in the wish list, wait for them to go on sale. And then I've got... Now, Nintendo did do right with the um, coin system it has. So every time you buy something, you get coins. And those coins act like real dollars. A hundred coins is a real life dollar. You can get a discount on your next game. So you can let those coins stack up. That's usually what I do. I let the coins stack up till I got, you know, nine or ten bucks. And instead of using that to get a discount on the next Mario game, I use it to take a risk on an indie game I otherwise wouldn't have spent money on. Because it was free for me. So I'm more likely to risk a new game I've never heard of. If I got to get it for free. So, and I've discovered quite a few indie gems and indie game developers that I've liked. Because I bought their first game with those coins. And then I find out I like the developer and then I start following that developer and I look for other games. But anyway, so they have no cart system either. There's no shopping cart. So when you buy a game on the Nintendo Switch, you purchase that game right then and there. And... Lord forbid you want to do some mass shopping during a sale on Nintendo Switch. Because after buying the game, you're left with two options. Close, which you would think would close the window so you can go back into the store, but it just closes you out of the store entirely as if you're done shopping, so you have to go back in from the beginning. Or you pick the other the other, uh, the other, other option, continue shopping, which you would think, okay, well, that'll take me back to where I was uh, so I can continue shopping and pick up where I left off. Only if you hit continue shopping, it for some reason kicks you back to the storefront. Takes you back to the beginning, to the main page on Nintendo's storefront. So it doesn't matter if you close out of the eShop or if you continue shopping. Either way, you're going to go back to the beginning and have to find the place where you were on whatever list you were shopping to continue your shopping. Because you can only buy one game at a time. And it loads ridiculously slow. So you can't just scroll real fast back down through... Their, you know, sales list of stuff that's on sale to get back to where you were. You have to load one or two rows of games at a time. Wait for it to, you know, load the games. Then you can go two more rows and wait for it. For some reason, console stores are always just super laggy. And I don't understand why. It can't be that hard to do a storefront, guys. I mean, these these are game systems that run, you know, stuff like... Stuff like Doom and, you know, fucking 4K versions of games with... With advanced physics and lighting and you know and and blah blah blah, but a, a storefront that's just showing me pictures and prices of shit you guys can't handle. Really, they always feel half-assed. 
all these storefronts always feel half-assed. The Epic Storefront feels half-assed with no shopping cart there either, so you have to buy the game directly, just like on Nintendo, but they take it a step further to be worse than Nintendo Storefront, because if you buy too many games too quickly on, on, on the Epic Game Store, they had their first big sale, and I think it was people who bought more than five. If you decided you had money to burn, and you wanted to really take advantage of this Epic, their first big Epic Game Sale on their storefront, if you bought more than five games within... You know, quick succession. You're just trying to go through the store and buy all the stuff you want at one time. Uh, you got banned from the store for suspected fraudulent activity. So then you had to go through customer support to get your account back. So all the while you're waiting on support and you're waiting to get your, your account back. All the while going through that frustration, you're also missing out on the sale. Because it's a limited time sale. So but I hope you get your account back in time to take full advantage of the sale. Because you, had, you would have to get your account back. Then go back into the store to continue shopping. And remember to not buy more than five games. And then leave the storefront. Wait X number of hours. And then go back and buy four more games. So I hope you got enough time to get everything you want before the end of the sale. Which is just sheer stupidity. It just... That's... Like, How did... How did that not get picked up? I mean, that's got to be a basic true. oversight. I mean, just that yeah. seems like something that should have instantly thrown up a red flag. And a lot of these things do feel like oversights. Like on Nintendo's side of things, I, I get it. Most of Nintendo's sales have been physical up until the, up until the Switch. Even the 3DS and Wii U eShops only really sold for virtual console things. Only they don't have a virtual console on the Switch. So they're selling more digital games now than they ever did before. So they're kind of new to this whole market. So they're kind of learning as they go here. They're not having a shopping cart, very basic storefront. Worked on on the, on the, uh, the 3DS and the Wii U because, again, a lot of people, their overall sales weren't coming digitally there. Most people still bought game cartridges and they only use the storefront for you know things like dlc which most games did that in game you didn't have to go to their shop and your indie games and stuff like that and your virtual console stuff so people went to those storefronts when they were specifically looking for something so they knew what they wanted they went there for that one thing and then they left uh, but now they're new to this all right i'll give epic the benefit of the doubt and say that they're new to this too They've run games forever. They built successful game engines, but this is their first time running a storefront. So, okay, I kind of get it. I expected some lack of features and some learn as they go because there's a lot of stuff that feels like common sense to you as a consumer that for a company running their first storefront just might not have thought of. The little small stuff. But that's not a small thing, though. That's a pretty big one. That's a that's a pretty big like you can't you mean to tell me you didn't have one intern or one guy on staff going what what if what if people want to buy more than five games? Like not one person asked that question before launching a sale of this magnitude? I mean the whole purpose in this sale is to get people to buy a lot of games, but you have a limit on the number of games they can buy before they get banned. Like how did you not catch this? So with these digital marketplaces fucking up left and right, I mean, I haven't even mentioned the publishers doing their own storefronts. Bethesda doing its storefront with its launcher, you know, Ubisoft doing its launcher, Origin, uh, EA doing its launcher, you know, all the, ev everyone needs a fucking storefront and a launcher now. You know, the, the Windows store itself has been a disaster. Just, I don't understand why it's so hard for anyone to do a proper storefront. So, all this leads to frustrated gamers. Because they either miss sales and they're constantly having to buy games at full price when they feel they shouldn't. Because they missed out on a sale because it wasn't properly advertised to them. Or because their account got banned. Or because they didn't have a shopping cart and they just got tired of dealing with your storefront and gave up on the sale. So, this kind of frustration leads them to sites... Which is where my little personal story comes in. Like G2 fucking A. 
Now, if you're unfamiliar with G2A, listen to the podcast, you don't know what these sites are. Uh, G2A is kind of the most famous one, but there's a lot of them out there. Uh, they're, they sell game keys. They're key resellers. And now traditionally in the past, they've mainly focused on, they've mainly been smaller and focused on PC game. Because PC gaming's kind of been digital only for a long time. You know, even if you go to a to a store within the last 10 years maybe and bought a PC game, most of the time you just got an empty box with a download code. So you still had to download. So PC gamers are no strangers to this digital only storefront thing. This, this isn't new to them. And key reseller sites, because of the fact that everything's always been digital on PC, developers, you know, there's always been plenty of game keys to go around. So people buy the keys in bulk during a sale, wait for the sale to end, and then they throw them up on these game uh, key reselling sites and resell them for a profit. You know, it's basically the same uh, thing you see with scalpers on a site like eBay. Where they buy up something until the sale is over, until it sells out. In a digital space, it doesn't sell out. But, you know, in in physical media, that's common with Nintendo products. People buy them up until they sell out. And then you jump on eBay and they're up there for four times the price. Uh, So they do that again with these digital sales. They buy mass amount of keys. You know, like right now you could get, uh, just as an example, right now there's a Steam sale where you could get um, Borderlands, the... The collection, the handsome collection with Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, you can get that $50 game for $2.15. So before Steam stopped allowing you to store games in your Steam inventory or to buy just the keys, now you have to activate the game when you buy it. But back before they did that, people would go to a Steam sale and they'd just buy the game in bulk. Just buy a ton of copies and just keep them in their Steam uh, inventory. People would make whole Steam accounts just for reselling stuff. That they would use to just store shit on. And then they would store these games in their inventory. Get a key from Humble Bundle or somewhere like that during a sale. And just buy them in bulk. Wait for the sale to end. And then throw them up on sites like G2A. Where they took that $2.15 game and sold it uh, for $10. You know, $10 or $15. Now the game's normal price. Because on Steam it's going to go back to its normal price of $50. After the sale's over. So if you miss the sale and you're one of those people who are pissed off. Then you got to go... But you don't want to pay 50 bucks for it. You go to one of these key resellers to buy it from somebody who has an extra copy. Quote unquote extra copy. And yeah, you're not getting it for that $2 sale price. But you're still paying a lot less than 50. So it it seems like a win-win. You pay less. The guy selling it gets a little bit of profit. And if that's how it worked, that would be great. Problem with with these key, key resellers like G2A and Kingwin and... You know, those are the more popular ones. But the problem with these sites is they have little to no security or oversight at all. So they do nothing to fight fraudulent keys uh, or fraudulent key purchases. So G2A in particular has a reputation of the majority of the keys on its site, which now you can get keys for consoles and things like that too. So it's not just PC gaming. You know, if a game has a digital version, you can probably find it on G2A. Somebody's got a key. You can even buy subscriptions to Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus on there. But the problem is most of the stuff on there, they have a reputation that most of that stuff is bought uh, with stolen credit cards. So fraudulent purchases from the beginning, before it even hit that storefront. Now, that's not even saying anything for the number of, um, for the scam that is, you know, people just reselling used keys that don't work. And then that site charging you to get some customer service to get your key back. To get a new key, for them to find you a new key. So, that's where we'll go into my personal experience. I've used G2A twice in my life. And... When I first heard about it, I thought it sounded great. And I, like many gamers, wanted to give it a try, especially streaming. You know, I thought I'd even promote them a little bit because G2A also, as if being scummy enough with selling stolen keys or keys bought with stolen credit cards, they also dipped their toe into the scummy world of multi-level marketing, which is basically a legal pyramid scheme. So you recruit people 
and you advertise for their site with your recruitment link and they you know for every new seller you recruit or every game sale you get through your recruitment link you get a kickback so i thought the site had a bunch of good things going for it oh wow that i can i can get a little discount on my games by promoting them i can actually get paid to help promote sounded like a good storefront so i used them uh, i bought evolve i remember the very first thing i bought i, I bought evolve because I had bought that game the day it came out. Bought it at launch for 60 bucks. Wife wanted to play. I didn't want to pay 60 bucks for another copy on day one. So I took a chance on a key reseller site. I got it for half off. Got it for $30 on G2A. So I bought it from G2A on Steam for 30 bucks. They emailed me the code almost instantly. And I should point out that G2A itself doesn't sell any keys. It's uh, basically an eBay for game keys. You're buying from other people. G2A is just acting as the middleman. So, in, 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 anyway, the seller I bought it from gave me the key instantly. Everything went smoothly at first. So we spent a couple days playing Evolve on PC. Me and the wife, we're streaming it, we're having a good time. Where a couple days after purchase, she went to log into Steam and she got a message saying that her copy of Evolve had been revoked and she no longer had access to it. So there's another downside to buying digital instead of physical is they can just take your game away. I mean, I guess I guess that I guess that's always been able to happen with them banning the accounts like they could always ban your account. But when you own a physical copy of a game. With the exception of games like Destiny that are online only, as long as the game had a single player mode or campaign, you could still at least access that. Not but whole game gone. Whole game gone. She had no access to it. Contact Steam support, try to find out what happened. And they informed us that they're not going to give her money back because she didn't buy it from their storefront. Okay, fine, sounds fair. They're not going to reinstate her copy of the game that she'd have to contact the uh, storefront she got it from because that key was reported as fraudulent. It was obtained by fraudulent means, which means that that key, she, that that key I bought her from G2A was bought with a stolen credit card. And whoever they stole that credit card from reported it and they had you know actually filed a police report and traced it back and steam had to refund it and when they refund it they revoke the game so buying stolen goods means you don't get to keep the good basically got confiscated so i go to g2a to report this uh they have no phone number to call and their live chat does not respond all right so i send them an email Two weeks later, I get a reply. It's just a ridiculous time frame on getting a reply to begin with. And the reply basically telling me that because I didn't purchase their shield protection, so at checkout when buying one of these fraudulent keys from G2A, you can pay for customer service. You can pay an extra $7, you know, 5 or $7, for the G2A shield so that they'll guarantee you get a working key. Something they should just do anyway as a fucking storefront for customer services to guarantee that the thing you're buying, you know, fucking works. You know, I don't have to pay for that on eBay. If I buy something on eBay and it's broken, eBay just takes it back. If I buy something on Amazon and it doesn't work, Amazon just takes it back. If I buy something at Walmart and it doesn't work, Walmart just takes it back. I, I, don't, I don't have to pay for that privilege. Uh, but basically, they told me that since I didn't have that privilege, since I didn't pay for it, uh, I'll have to contact the seller directly. That is now my problem. They're not going to step in and do their job as a storefront and act like a middleman. They're actually going to tell me to communicate with a seller on their site, with another individual, potentially starting a fight because he's using fraudulent keys, and try to go after him myself to chase down a refund, which we all know is never going to fucking happen. He's either going to ignore my messages entirely or laugh at me and tell me to fuck off. He's not going to give me my money back. 
That's the whole point in a storefront like G2A is to police that kind of thing, to keep that from happening, to act as the professional middleman. I mean, fuck, you're basically the owner of a digital flea market at that point. And that's the whole job of the management staff of a flea market is to give sellers a place to sell and to be there to moderate and handle any disputes. To provide security so people stay safe inside your building, etc. So there's no security. There's nothing that makes me feel safe shopping there. And there's zero customer support because I didn't pay extra for that privilege. And yeah, my very first shopping experience on G2A got me a fraudulent key purchased with a stolen credit card that I'm just fucking stuck with. So I'm out 30 bucks now. Which means I can either try to buy another key for and waste 30 more dollars, which would have put me at the $60 that it would have cost me to buy the game new anyway. Or I can buy the game new and be $30 in the hole. So I won't even break even at this point. All because I tried to save a little money. So that was my first experience with G2A. After that, I probably should have sworn off of them. But, you know, I experimented with them and... I bought another game much later. I bought another game. Now, I didn't spend $30 this time. I spent $10. It's a small amount of money just to see. Because I complained about this on stream and complained about this on stream. And I had a ton of people uh, coming into the stream, you know, commenting on my YouTube videos, leaving me me messages in my Discord saying stuff like uh, that had not been their experience on G2A. That their experience had been mostly positive. And that uh, what happened to me was an outlier. That's not the typical experience. So I decided I'd put their their words to the test. I bought a $10 game. Bought a game that's on sale for 10 bucks from G2A. Again, I can't remember which one I bought this time. Indie game. Something, something that, that I wasn't super hyped about. Uh, just to test it. Might, might even have been some DLC or something. Um, and this time I paid extra for their shield. Thinking, well, you know what? People are telling me I should have got the Shield program. Even though that's a scam, it's a ripoff. They're charging me for customer service, but that's what I should have done. I should have got the customer service there. So that's what I'll do this time. I'll buy the I'll buy the customer service, the Shield, to protect me, and I'll, and I'll give them another shot. I'll give them a second chance. So that's what I did. I spent 10 bucks, gave them a second chance, bought the Shield, got my key. I can't remember what I bought the key for, but I do remember that this one just flat out didn't work. Key didn't work. This one didn't work for a little bit like the last one did and then got revoked. It just straight up didn't work. So the first key I bought was bought by fraudulent means and Steam revoked the game. The second key I bought was an already used key that they were just reselling again. But I thought, ha, you know what? Glad I got the shield this time. I should be fine. So I contact support. Again, no phone number to call on G2A. And their live chat, which I thought might respond to me since I had the little icon next to my name that said I was a S.H.I.E.L.D. customer, that I had bought the protection, that I had paid for, for oh yeah, one of the other perks was was priority customer service. If I need to contact customer service, I get, I get priority in the queue so I don't have to wait. No hold times. And no one in their chat responded again. So I send an email. Now to their credit... Uh, the email response this time with the little shield icon next to my name was much faster. I got my response in two days instead of two weeks. Still ridiculously long, but I got it in two days. And what did that email say? I don't have word from word of the email, but basically it said uh, the same thing that the last one said, that I needed to contact the seller and file a dispute and then go back through customer service which I then did. I decided to go through this process. And I don't really care about the $10 at this point, And I didn't care about the thing I bought not working. It was all just an experiment. But at this point, I said, all right, well, I'm going to try to hunt down this guy. So I contact the seller to file a dispute that they're going to try to moderate this time. They want to know what this to. They want me to attempt to work with the seller first and let me know what he says. And they'll step in if they have to. So I contact the seller, to try to file a dispute. And guess what the seller says? 
Well, if you don't know, guess what? That's the same answer I got because I don't speak whatever fucking language he replied in. And he didn't speak mine. So I contact support to tell them this. And they basically said they don't do refunds, but they'll try to find me a working key. Now they eventually found me a working key from another seller, but the process took four months of once a week emails with them going back and forth during which time I had to prove that the key didn't work. It was on the burden of proof was on me. I had to prove it didn't work. I had to have screenshots of uh, timestamp screenshots of the storefront saying that it was redeemed, a screenshot of when I bought it, a screenshot of this, a screenshot of my computer with the timestamp of this, this, and this. I had to have all of this. And copies of emails from that storefront where I tried to contact that storefront to ask them why the key didn't work. They wanted a response from that storefront saying why the key didn't work too. So I had to do all this for them over the course of four months before they did the the thing that their premium customer service shield said it guaranteed a working key. So if you use a storefront like G2A, yes, you'll get a working key if you use the shield. You just might not get it for a while. In fact, the game may drop in price several times before you get your key if it doesn't work. Before you get that key, you're guaranteed. But they did guarantee you a key, so you'll get it. The thing is, they didn't guarantee you a time frame. So that's my personal experience of how shitty a service like G2A is. And in fact, it is so shitty, and I'm not the one who thinks so, that they've got a reputation for this. That's becoming kind of infamous. To the point that developers are now encouraging people to pirate their games. Multiple indie devs have said that sites like G2A cost them money. Not that it cost them sales, but it physically cost them a sale and then some money. Because anytime there's chargebacks or disputes with keys not working, they have to front the cost for that fraudulent key. You know, with people people reporting stolen credit cards and chargebacks and that kind of thing. So when you buy on sites like G2A, you end up not only hurting them by not giving them a sale, but costing them money in the process. They said we would, these developers have openly said we would rather have you pirate our games than buy from sites like G2A. If you're not going to buy it from us, then just pirate it. Basically, if you're not going to buy it from an official storefront that we partner with, just pirate it. Because we're not going to see the money anyway, so don't waste your money. So that's where we're at with these digital storefronts. Official storefronts are so shitty that people look to sites like G2A, look to sites that are so scummy that the developers, the makers of the game, are actively telling you to steal it are actively encouraging piracy over using this storefront. How the fuck did we get here? Why the fuck is an online storefront so hard? I don't understand it. Online storefronts have been around for quite a while now. And it's not like no one's ever done one successfully so you don't even have a model to follow. Amazon's the biggest fucking retailer in the goddamn world, and they're an online-only storefront. Just copy fucking Amazon. You don't even have to copy the hard parts of Amazon that other companies can't, can't copy. You don't have to copy the shipping parts. You're a digital storefront. You just do it instantly. You don't have to copy a Prime subscription model to guarantee shipping. You don't have to employ thousands of warehouse workers and go through all the logistics. You don't have to do half the fucking work that Amazon does to just get a working digital storefront. You just have to make shit available and have servers that can provide the download. That's fucking it. Just have working keys and working servers. 
The rest of it's making your storefront work. And on that end, just copy Amazon. Their wishlist feature works. Their cart feature works. Their sales work. Just look at how they do it. And then you do that. Make a gaming version of Amazon for your storefront. Why is this so fucking hard? Why are storefronts on consoles so goddamn laggy all the time? Why is it I can throw a redhead into a post-apocalyptic world on PS4 and take down goddamn robotic dinosaurs with a bow without ever dropping a frame or missing a beat? But I can't browse the PlayStation Store without having to walk away from my controller while it loads if I tried to scroll too fast? I'm not even talking about scroll fast, like I scrolled for a minute or two and it just started moving. I'm talking, I just clicked the down button on the D-pad five or six times to skip the first five or six rows and the store froze. Anyone who's used the PlayStation Store has had that experience. It's not just me. I have a PS4 Pro. I got the more powerful one. And from what I understand, this is the same. This this is the same experience for people on other consoles. The Xbox storefront is a nightmare. Nintendo eShop is notoriously laggy, but that's Nintendo being Nintendo. They don't understand how the internet works. So no shopping cart. No basic features. Sorting is a goddamn nightmare on there. Sorting on any of these, just navigation in general is a is a goddamn nightmare on any of these fucking storefronts. So these storefronts have problems with functionality. They have problems with navigation. They have problems with getting sales right that don't end up screwing people over or delete things from their marketplace entirely. And they're so frustrating to use most of the time that people would rather take a risk on fraudulent keys and things like that to get their game. Because they missed a sale. Because they're frustrated they missed a sale because of some stupid shit like you not having a shopping cart and banning your users because they bought too many games too quickly. When you have a timed sale and people get mad that they weren't able to get what they wanted from the sale before the end of the sale, they'll turn to sites like G2A. They won't go pay full price after the sale. Their frustration is going to lead them to gamble. And that's what you're doing when you're buying from G2A. You're fucking gambling. Is that key going to work? Roll the dice. Now, is customer service going to give a shit about it? Roll the dice. They're going to reply in a timely manner so I can have my fucking my fucking working key because they, they're, they're sure as fuck not going to give you your money back. But roll the dice. I would say... I would say Turn into the comments now, because I think I've think I've let my rage out. I just I would say the Xbox and Nintendo shops are way worse in loading speeds and slowness. Yeah, I mean the PlayStation one is a little better. But that's my point, is they're all bad. They're all bad. I mean, at least the PlayStation one has a shopping cart. That works. I can use my phone. I actually use my phone when buying shit on PS4. I throw everything into the shopping cart on the mobile app because it works better. It loads faster, and it's easier to navigate. It has a different layout. So I use the mobile app to find the games I want, throw them into my shopping cart, and then I'll turn on my PS4 and go into the store and go to my shopping cart to check out. So at least it has a fucking working shopping cart. Okay, give it that. The Windows Store is a fucking disaster. The Xbox interface is garbage. Their store is a disaster. Oh, the Xbox store is a disaster. You don't notice any problems when you're in there? It does. It loads slow. And I don't buy things from the Xbox store. But I bought an Xbox One just for Xbox Game Pass. And just browsing the store to look for Game Pass games that are included with Game Pass to install. It's slow. It, the presentation is horrible. It's a lot easier to use the uh, phone app Yeah, for that too. It's so fast compared to their and, and it's console. And it and it's just the the design in general is garbage. And I don't think that's a hundred percent just the storefront on Xbox. The Xbox One interface as a whole is just trash. 
that they fill your screen with these large ass icons that give you no hint at any form of navigation. And if you use things, the icons move around. So it's not even like PlayStation where this icon is always going to be in this spot and you can kind of memorize a path to get to it to streamline your experience. They put your most used apps. And for some reason, things like the game settings menu is considered an app. So if you haven't used it in a while, you got to go digging for it. It doesn't, it's not just on your screen. You know, simple functions like that. So the Xbox system as a whole is bad. Just, just that's what I'm talking about is all these interfaces are just bad with these consoles and stuff that make people want to go use these other sites because it's just, you're just adding to the frustration level. People have a cap on frustration level with how much of your bull crap they're going to put up with. And any new digital storefront that's going to come out. Like, we, we, we can't do this with the next generation of consoles. Like, they have to fix this. If you're going to focus on digital-only content going forward, if that's going to be your push, this has to be addressed. Not just... You know, uh, I'm not just talking about one particular company. I'm talking about as a whole. Every single digital storefront coming out next gen, gen generation needs to be at least as funkin' functional on the console as the mobile version you're going to put on an app. Ideally, every version of an online storefront should be as functional as just visiting fucking Amazon. I feel like Amazon has set the fucking standard for digital storefronts. And you have a much easier time of making an Amazon-like experience on your storefront than a retailer that sells physical goods because you don't have to deal with shipping. So you don't have to remake Amazon entirely. That's asking the impossible. But remaking a digital Amazon? You absolutely have the means to do that. You've got the servers to provide the games. You've got the keys. You've already got the storefronts. You've got the partners... Uh, with the, the partnerships with the developers and publishers, all you got to do now is present it in a user-friendly way. In a storefront that's been coded by someone with competence. In an interface that's easy to navigate. When going into a store, access to the items is what's important. You want people to see the sale. You want to put, you know, I mean... That's marketing 101. That's not even a design thing. That's not even a coding thing. That's not a technical thing. You don't walk into Walmart and ever have trouble finding what's on sale in Walmart. There's goddamn banners over the front door. They put that shit right at the fucking entrance. When they do a back to school sale or something, that shit is right at the fucking entrance. You can't walk into that store without seeing that shit. It doesn't matter what you're walking into Walmart for. That shit is front and center. And it is not hard to find. There are banners and signs all over that store to remind you. And arrows saying, it's right fucking here. Come to this aisle. Oh, which is conveniently located right across from the checkout lanes. If you want to just go come into the store just to take advantage of the sale, you don't have to go far. They make that fucking everything in that store is designed to be as convenient as fucking possible during a sale. Because that's how you make your goddamn money. That's just marketing. There is no point in having a sale. If you had to go into Walmart because you saw a sale online or you got a flyer in the mail telling you Walmart was having a sale, they advertise the sale and then you go into their store to take advantage of the sale and there's no signs pointing you to the sale. All the items are in their normal spot scattered around the store. And the only thing you have to know that it's on sale is a little sticker on the item itself. But you have to physically walk around the store and find it. They don't do that. When they do a sale, they take those items, move them from their normal spot, and put them all front and center. And give you everything except a neon fucking sign to find it with. It's front and center. It's easy to get in. It's easy to find the thing you want on sale. It's easy to get out. Transferring that into a digital space shouldn't be that fucking difficult. These stores should be lightweight so that you don't have these fucking loading issues. So that, you know, the stores don't... I can't count the number of times the PlayStation stores just crashed. Froze up or just crashed on me and kicked me back to my dashboard. Lord forbid that happens on somewhere like the Nintendo eShop because I've got no shopping cart. 
And if I don't remember where I was at, I've I've had that happen to me. I've had the eShop kick, kick me back to the dashboard on the Switch. And I can't remember where I was at in the eShop to find that game I was looking at. And then I go back into the eShop. I can't remember the name of the game because that's another thing that irritates me with the fucking eShop is I can't find the names of some of the games. They don't put text versions of the name under the games. They just give you a thumbnail. So if the developer of that game didn't put the title of the game in the thumbnail, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. This is a picture. They don't, they put the price under it in text. Why, why, why aren't you putting the name of the game next to the price? It's not there. So I've had indie games that uh, they had little thumbnails that looked okay. But I didn't know what the game was. And then the store crashed on me and I couldn't find the game again. So I couldn't buy the thing I was probably actually going to buy. I looked interested in it. I was going to look at it. And if the video looked cool, I might have actually bought it. But now I can't find it again. Because your store crashed. Because it's slow as shit for some reason. How hard is it to code a storefront that just doesn't crash? You're not even showing millions of items like Amazon is. So it's not like it's a database loading issue. There aren't that many games in these storefronts. Even the storefronts that have been around for longer than the eShop, like the PlayStation Store, that have tons of items on them, they still don't hit Amazon numbers. Databases aren't that hard to maintain when they're under... They, they, it probably doesn't even hit the hundreds of thousands. Definitely doesn't hit the millions of items in the store. So why are we having database errors and loading issues? They're hastily thrown together. And yeah, we're them. talking less than 10,000 entries in the stores. Yeah. That's... And I mean, these entries are kilobytes in size. This is not a lot of data to have to download and transfer. It shouldn't be loading this slow. It's 100% a coding issue on the point of the storefront, and there's this... There's no excuse for it. There really isn't. There's no reason interfaces should be this bad. There's no reason dashboards should be this hard to use, looking at you, Xbox One. There's no reason storefronts should be this slow and this laggy. There's no reason that... The experience should be this fucking frustrating that I'm willing to roll the dice on possible fraudulent activity or buying from a possible thief. Buying from a shady source. Because their store fucking works. It does its job. The G2A store does its fucking job. For those of you watching on YouTube and not just listening to the audio version of this podcast, you've no doubt seen this picture next to me this whole time I've been talking and wondered, what is this about? It's a picture of a sale with no sight on it. That's a G2A sale. It's a picture from a G2A sale. Put that up to see how many people would notice. It's front and center. It's organized. It's in your face. It loads the way it should. The site loads the way it should. They definitely make it easy to find that thing you want to buy. As a storefront, G2A, King One, sites like that do their fucking job. Because they want your money. And they know that the only thing they have to do to get it is to make that storefront and make it easy as possible for you to spend it. They ain't fucking around. They keep it updated daily, sometimes hourly. I'm not even talking about them catering to your experience by, you know, using cookies to track your browsing history. I'm not even talking about console game stores or, you know, launcher game stores on PC doing that. You can leave that part out and still make a good storefront that's that loads quickly and is easy to use and is easy to find the shit I want to buy. They're going to have to nail this with the next generation of games. You can test the power of your system all day long to find out how many teraflops it has, frames per second, and resolutions it can output, and how well it loads, how quickly it can, you know, get rid of loading screens. You can do all that technical testing in the world to advertise your system to people who might not understand what half that technical data means. Because I can tell you right now, 9 out of 10 people, when I ask them what the fuck a teraflop is, don't fucking know. But they know Xbox One X has the most of them. Don't know what they are or what they do, but Xbox One has the most of them. So give me that one. (laughs) How about you focus less on technical jargon most of your users don't understand to begin with? Quit working on marketing buzzwords. 
and spend the last couple months of development before you launch a console on fixing that fucking interface. Like, how, why don't you beta test that? Just beta test that. Make a PC version of it to send out to people on your insider program there. Xbox, who can try it out, who can click around on the interface on a PC to tell you if they if they at least like its design. Yeah, it's probably going to load faster on their PC than it will on the console, but they gonna, you, 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 you can at least get the design point out of the way. Get some fucking feedback so you're not releasing these weird fucking interfaces that you can't... That I, don't, I don't know who designs these things. Even the Switch one annoys me. It's just this interface as a whole. It's ugly. It's this, it's this monotone gray color, and it's just these huge icons staring me in the face. And if I got more than five or six games, which I do... I have to open up my library and then go hunting for my game. I can't organize it into folders. I can't customize any fucking thing about that screen. And I hate that. I mean, the PlayStation is not much better, but at least I can organize things into folders and I can have the home screen the way I want it so I can have some form of organization to get to the stuff I want because I do have a large collection. 200 plus games on PS4. So when you start trying to organize stuff like that, then the interface needs to work. I got over 100 plus games on Xbox One thanks to Game Pass. But finding the ones I want to play is a goddamn nightmare. Why can't I just put folders on my home screen so I can easily log in and get to the stuff I want? Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. Why can't I just do that? Why do I have to go find each game individually? Just little simple shit like that. Now, they're going to have to nail this with the next gen gen generation of consoles if they... If they're really going to try to kill retail gaming, if they're really going to focus on an all-digital experience, then you need to show people that that experience is better. You need to justify your move to this platform. And stuff like Google Stadia is going to definitely have to nail it because it doesn't have a physical media option for any of its games, ever. If Xbox releases another console that doesn't have a disk drive, it's going to have to nail it. And Nintendo's thinking of doing the same. If if you guys are going to keep pushing for this all digital or possible streaming thing, then the interface is going to be your bread and butter. And if it's not better, people will still prefer to pick their games physically off a shelf where they can just walk right up to it and grab it than have to log into your storefront or your menu system and hunt for it. If it takes me longer to find it digitally than it does to physically get up off my couch and walk to a physical copy on a shelf that I keep somewhere in my house, if it takes me longer to do that in your console than it does to go physically grab it in real life, it takes too long. And you're never going to convince people that it's better until you do that. You can pin games to your home screen on Xbox. Yes, individual games. But on PS4, I can make a folder and pin them and put them in the order I want them in. Like, I'll show you guys... My PS4 interface one day, I got it hooked up in the living room, but next stream, I'll, I'll pull it out. I've got games organized by genre, action, adventure, RPG, first person shooter, survival, etc. So I can easily find the game I'm looking for. Or if I give the controller to somebody in my house or somebody visiting who doesn't know what I have and wants to browse, it's easy to browse. The Xbox One is not easy to browse. I can't count the number of people who call. I, I do tech support for a living, and I don't even do tech support for consoles. I just do tech support for internet, but I can't tell you the number of people who call in to say that they're experiencing lag or something while gaming on Xbox. And I just tell them to go to their settings on their Xbox so we can check their network settings. And they don't know where to find the fucking settings menu on Xbox. I can't tell you the number of people who call in and they can't find the settings menu on their Xbox. They don't know where it's at. They were like, well, the first day I hooked it up, it was on my home screen, but now it's not there and I don't know where it went. Yeah, it doesn't make it obvious. The Xbox One doesn't. It's it's horrible. It's horrible. That interface is shit. And the Nintendo Switch is just your most recently used icons constantly reordering themselves based on what you play. So it's not a it's not a ton better either. G2A will give them credit. They put I, w I will give them credit. They put the sales on the front page and highlight them and put shiny boxes around them. Oh, yeah, and then they'll give you free 
keys after you buy so many games. Yeah, no, they push their sales properly. They know what they're doing when it comes to making you spend your money. They just don't know what they're doing when it comes to protecting your money or giving a shit about you as a customer. Teraflops is how terrible the interface is, and that is a flop. <laughs> so reading your comments now before the end of the podcast here. Um, Xbox One, I just put a small list of games that I play often on the homepage, and I did that 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 way, but it's shit compared to the nicer folder system of the PS4. Yeah, PS4, I can have all my all my games in a single folder, so seven plus games accessible with a single click of a button. Yeah, and the and the PS4 just loads faster. I'll be honest with you, 90% of my navigating on Xbox One, which again, I only use for Game Pass. I don't own any actual Xbox One games. I just use it for Game Pass because I was I like the Game Pass service. It's literally the only reason I own an Xbox, but 90% of my navigating through Xbox is done with that little blade that comes out when you press the home button. I rarely go to my home screen. I just navigate that is easier to navigate than going through the home screen which is a fucking travesty to be honest with you like that's sad and nintendo switch i mean there's not really much you can do on that one there's no folder system it's uh, it's just your last seven or eight games show up in a row the last seven or eight things you used so if you used youtube if you used uh you know if you used uh hulu if you used the nes system just the last seven or eight things you used show up as icons and that's it it's basically just a recent history list and that's your that's your interface on switch so yeah it's kind of shit too and even when you go to your library there's no way to sort that list it just puts them all in alphabetical order and you just gotta scroll until you find what you want so the bigger your library gets the longer that's gonna take yeah you can't sort them based on the ones you have installed and the ones you do, you you don't have downloaded, you know, because obviously SD card space is a problem with the Switch, so I'm constantly deleting games off my Switch and re-downloading the games I want to play as I want to play them. So, yeah, the Switch has its fair share of problems too. Like, they're going to have to sort all this shit out if they want to get rid of physical media and if they want to push more people to their storefronts. Because if we're really going to go the path of stream of game streaming and digital media, this is vital because this will be your this will be your go to place to buy games from now on. People aren't going to be getting them at Walmart and you know Best Buy or GameStop anymore. If we're going digital only, they're just going to you're going to want them to go to your store first. I mean, sure, you're going to sell those cards. There's game code cards at, at those retailers, but you're going to want people to go to your storefront first and buy directly from you. So why would you not make that as easy to use as possible? Why would you not, you know, beta test that and make sure that that works? I don't understand why all these storefronts seem to be an afterthought instead of the focus. They're going to have to do things backwards for the next gen of gaming. The storefront's going to have to be the focus. Not focus in a bad way where they're constantly throwing it in your face, but focus in a way that it's been tested, it's intuitive, and it works. It needs to do its fucking job. So I don't feel even tempted to use a site like G2A ever. Because I missed a sale because you didn't properly advertise it or because I didn't know how to get to the content in it. I should never feel tempted to use G2A. And I will never use them again. And I, I'll side with the developers on this one. Anyone thinking of using them, just pirate the game. You'll be doing the dev a favor by pirating the game instead of buying it from G2A. So that's sad that that's where we're at. But thank you for your comments, guys. Uh, thank you all for showing up and being part of this week's podcast. I was just letting out my frustration because this latest Steam sale is, uh, has, has been a frustrating one. And devs hate it as much as the users do. It's confusing. Their little summer sale here with the, you know, being able to pick your team. And yeah, it's, I'm tired of store gimmicks and crap like this. I just wanted stores done right. And then it's just, I started thinking about all the stores I navigate and I could feel a rant coming. So there it was. Fix your fucking storefronts, devs. Fix your fucking storefronts. All right. Best foot forward. I'm tired of I'm tired of physical storefronts and I'm just as irritated with the digital ones. Just want to see one done right. 
I'll be honest with you, a lot of times I buy my digital codes on Amazon. Speaking of Amazon. Because it's just easier to find what I'm looking for. Amazon even just organizes it by game. For instance, if I go to buy a, a game that's on all of the systems, I just search for that game and then it asks... Once I'm on that game's page on Amazon, it says, what edition do you want? And then you click the box and you go Xbox, PC, you know, Nintendo Switch, PS4, physical, digital. Yeah, it's, it's just it's easy. Stop making me shop at Amazon. I want to use your storefronts because they're built into the systems and I want everything kept all physically tied to my account and not tied somewhere else. I want to buy from legitimate sources. I want shit to just work. Which I don't feel is too much to ask on a console you're trying to take my money for. That you're charging hundreds of dollars for. I, I, I don't feel asking for the product I bought to just work is too much to ask. So can we, can we maybe do that? Can we maybe do that in the future, you guys? Can we beta test that instead of beta testing your, your teraflops and your buzzwords that most people don't know what they mean? Maybe test the storefront? Maybe talk about that a little bit at the next E3? game developers conference or whatever packs maybe 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 show off an interface from time to time and talk about how you give a shit about the the user experience as much as you do their gaming experience hmm? maybe just food for thought it seems common sense to me but I don't, I don't work for for a major dev or game publisher or you know system maker so what the hell do i know I'm just an idiot who spends way too much money on this stuff. And I'm just your target demographic with a camera and a microphone. What do I know? Thanks for watching, witches. I've been your triple A-hole. And I'll see you next week.